Do we then deem it any great and wonderful thing for the Maker of all things to raise up again those that have piously served Him in the assurance of a good faith, when even by a bird He shows us the mightiness of His power to fulfill His promise? So you see, Clement believes this is fact, not myth, because he says that God made the phoenix to die and live again as a way of showing that he has the power to raise humans from death at a future date. This is the promise Clement is referring to. For the scripture saith in a certain place, Thou shalt raise me up, and I shall confess unto thee. And again I laid me down and slept. I awaked, because thou art with me. And again Job says, Thou shalt raise up this flesh of mine, which has suffered all these things. For it is written, Enter into thy secret chambers for a little time, until my wrath and fury pass away, and I will remember a propitious day, and will raise you up out of your graves. Again, Clement isn't using an admitted myth to illustrate the concept of resurrection. He clearly believes that the phoenix was a real bird that died and resurrected once every 500 years. To Clement, the phoenix story was a fact which in his mind supported the idea that God would also raise humans in the final resurrection. Sort of a take on, if God keeps his eyes on sparrows, will he not also take care of humans? Unfortunately, he doesn't seem to be doing very much for the poor sparrows in my opinion. If Clement believed such a story as that of the phoenix, it is no stretch for him to believe a man also came back from the dead. As he explicitly told us, if God was willing to raise a bird from death, why not his own son and those who believed in him? Makes sense when you put it that way. Unfortunately, the story of the phoenix is not fact, but an obvious myth. But as for evidences, he has given us only philosophy and myth, a myth offered as evidence to support another myth. There is no other evidence for him to present concerning Jesus' resurrection, because up until the Gospels gained wide circulation in the mid to late second century, there were no resurrection details for anyone to talk about. See my Jesus Myth series on YouTube for more on that. Nowhere in the 14,000 words Clement wrote does he address the details of Jesus' own resurrection. And all he can offer us in support that a general resurrection of the dead will take place is the example of a mythical bird. But Clement also finds support in the cyclical nature of the Earth's rotation, the seasons, and so on. Let us behold, dearly beloved, the resurrection which happeneth at its proper season. Day and night show unto us the resurrection. The night falleth asleep, and day ariseth. The day departeth, and night cometh on. I would say that Clement wouldn't find this so comforting if he actually knew he was on a spherical planet that rotated on an axis every 24 hours. But back to the phoenix. No one today believes that a bird dies and rises again from the ashes and lives for 500 years at a time. But somehow, over 2 billion people still believe the other myth about a man who died and came back from the dead and then proceeded to float up through the clouds and presumably into outer space to make it back to heaven. To people living during Clement's day, it was hard to tell fact from fiction. And the great mysteries such as how the sun could rise each day consistently and how the foliage could die in winter and resurrect in spring certainly reinforced the idea that resurrection was a common thing. And why not for Jesus and his followers as well? And strangely, of all the times Clement could have mentioned the empty tomb, and post-resurrection appearances as proof of God's own Son being resurrected, he certainly missed his opportunity. Along these lines, Clement even talks about the beginnings of Christianity and makes no mention of anything that would constitute corroboration of the gospel story. The apostles received the gospel for us 
from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ was sent from God. The Christ, therefore, is from God, and the apostles from the Christ. In both ways, then, they were in accordance with the appointed order of God's will. Having therefore received their commands, and being fully assured by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and with faith confirmed by the word of God, they went forth in the assurance of the Holy Spirit, preaching the good news that the kingdom of God is coming. Clement offers nothing by way of evidence concerning Jesus' resurrection. Yet, as evidence for a general resurrection of believers, he offers us a story about a bird that dies every 500 years, turns into a worm that sprouts wings and flies its nest to Egypt in order to deposit it on a particular altar built by humans. He also offers for evidence what he believed were the cyclical movements of heavenly bodies, unaware that he actually lived on a spherical planet that was rotating on an axis and orbiting one of 10 sextillion stars. That's 10 with 21 zeros after it. A lack of understanding about how the world and the universe actually worked allowed the ancient authors to imagine all sorts of answers that seemed to make sense to them. But today, we know too much. The ancient beliefs of old, the true beliefs, those facts that Clement believed, are now considered myths, which had their day in the sun, but unlike the phoenix, have burned away into ashes, not to be resurrected, with only the written record of the ancients to inform us that they ever existed. In the next video, we'll look at some resurrections other than that of Jesus. We'll look at some modern claims of resurrection and, believe it or not, we'll put this series to bed. See you there.